Ladies and gentlemen, in modern day gaming, upscaling solutions such as NVIDIA's DLSS and AMD's FSR are critical for high frame rates. Even if your rig has a card inside such as an RTX 4090, if you want to play games such as Cyberpunk with all of the ray tracing bells and whistles enabled, it is very taxing. To that end, there's a couple of very interesting pieces of news I want to talk to you guys about in this video. The first is DirectSR, which allows developers to easily incorporate multiple solutions of um, upscaling technologies utilizing Microsoft's new API. And there's also a very cool piece of news from AMD. Their CTO seemed to confirm that the company is working on an AI powered version of their upscaling solution known as FSR. We're gonna get into this plus some Blackwell news right after this message from the sponsor of the video. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. Introducing DirectSR, says the dev blog over at Microsoft. I won't read out this entire set of text because you can see it on screen, but in a nutshell, we will know much more at the GDC conference, which is gonna be taking place from March the 18th, of course, of this year. Now, during this event, we're gonna learn also about work graphs as well, which are actually very interesting. Uh, they're gonna be powered by shader model 6.8 and um, AMD seemed to be holding this event um, with Microsoft as far as I know it requires an RDNA 3 class GPU but I haven't looked super amounts into work graphs yet because again we're going to learn much more about this officially um, on the 18th of March but let's focus here on direct SR so as I mentioned you have of course multiple solutions from different vendors this includes DLSS FSR and also XCSS there are also of course bespoke solutions from uh, different engines and developers as well Sony have various ones and of course uh, you've got them from Unreal Engine and so on but in this particular instance, DirectSR is basically Microsoft's way to allow games developers to incorporate uh, DLSS, FSR, and XESS with basically just a single SDK. Now, what this should mean, theoretically, is that it will allow developers to uh, basically have all of these solutions uh, good to go without a huge amount of work rather than having to code each of them manually it should make things much better for us as gamers so if for example you have an intel card or an amd card or you have an nvidia card you should be able to get the best visuals possible the best upscaling solution and that's obviously a very good thing but this actually comes on the back as i kind of alluded to earlier of another very exciting piece Oh, well, it's more of a hint, actually, from Mark Papermaster. Now, Papermaster is AMD's CTO. I want to give kudos here to videocards.com. Now, again, uh, AMD obviously have um, FSR, and they have on FSR free at the moment, and um, it doesn't actually use AI. They have a lot of technical jiggery pokery, which I've discussed, of course, about in the past, but with DLSS, that leverages tensor cores. And XESS, meanwhile, well, that's a little weirder. So basically, there is two variants of XESS. So you have um, versions of XESS which can run on Intel GPUs, and then there's kind of a more like generic version which will run on essentially anything so that uses dp4a and x um, xmx again depending on the vendor 
But um, Mark Papermaster has said that 2024 is a giant year for us because we spent so many years in our hardware and software capabilities for AI. We've just completed AI enabling in our entire portfolio, you know, cloud, edge PCs, and our embedded devices and gaming devices. We're enabling our gaming devices to upscale using AI, and 2024 is a really huge deployment year. So now the bedrocks are here and the capabilities are here. I have talked to you all about the partners that, so 2024 is for us a huge deployment. Now, again, those kind of comments are a little ambiguous because it does seem that they are referencing some type of upscaling for gaming because again they were referencing gaming specifically so the first question is when is this releasing um honestly i don't know about this, this is the first i've heard about this specifically i have heard that fsr4 is in the works but i have absolutely no idea what features it does bring to the table for all i know it you know gives you foot rubs so whether it's going to release this year or not, whether it's going to be announced at uh, GDC, I honestly have absolutely no clue. It would be interesting whether uh, it's something that does kind of debut at the same time as Direct SR. Now, as far as I understand, RDNA 4 does not have, um, let's say, Matrix cores. That is going to be um, something which is going to be coming with RDNA 5. However, there are some Salo improvements and a couple of other bits and bobs with RDNA 4. And obviously, they could still do stuff with machine learning. It could be running at um, lower precision operations or something like that. So it's going to be very interesting to see what AMD does. It's also possible that this is not a solution which is going to be running necessarily on the GPU. Perhaps it's something that they're going to work on in the future instead for, um, say, an NPU. But again, I don't think so, given the uh, way that this is worded. I think it's more likely to be a GPU type of solution. I will be extremely curious to see what AMD does here. Obviously, when it comes to NVIDIA, they are really pushing DLSS. I don't suspect they're going to be stopping that anytime soon. I have even heard that DLSS 4 is going to be even better um, I've heard some really loosey-goosey things, to be honest, about DLSS 4. Like, one of the things that I did get told, but, uh, this is probably untrue, so I wouldn't take this with any real, like, uh, confidence, is that there's going to be some type of driver-wide toggle. Um, obviously AMD does have kind of that at the moment with upscalers, but this allegedly is going to be like a driver-wide toggle with DLSS, and apparently there's going to be even better visual improvements, especially for, um, Sorry, and uh, um, performance improvements, especially for path tracing and ray tracing. But again, it's it's very difficult to know what is actually true on that front. I will be super interested, though, to see what NVIDIA does with DLSS. Um, either way, um, I think that upscaling solutions are not going anywhere. I know some people absolutely hate them, and they call them, you know, kind of cheating, especially when it comes to frame generation. Uh, frame generation is actually one of the things I've really heard has improved on uh, DLSS 4. Um, allegedly, there's a lot less latency, but I have absolutely no idea how that's going to work. So again, I wouldn't take that with any level of confidence, but it's going to be very curious to see what goes on with this. Direct SR, however, I am quite excited about because ultimately any, any means you can um, kind of use to make uh, it easier for games developers to incorporate those uh, additional solutions is definitely a good one now i want to talk about blackwell get your memes ready people so um this i want to give courtesy credit to uh videocards.com again um because they actually found a very interesting uh quote from um well dell and we're excited about what happens at the B100 and the B200. And we think that there's actually another opportunity to distinguish engineering confidence. Our characterizations on the thermal side, you really don't need direct liquid to get the energy density of 1000 watts per GPU. That happens next year with B200. The opportunity for us really to showcase our engineering and how fast we can move and work that we've done as an industry leader to bring our expertise to make liquid cooling perform at scale. So what we do know is that GTC is going to be happening 
uh, in basically two weeks. Technically speaking, it's around 16 days. And of course, we do expect NVIDIA to announce a lot more details concerning its plans. We also know because NVIDIA have already confirmed that Blackwell is coming. They've also um, released a benchmark of sorts which show that it absolutely trounces the previous generation. <laughs> it's going to be absolutely interesting if 1000 watts is true. One thing I can say is that if it is true, perhaps this is a hint of the MCM variants that, of course, we've discussed a couple of times in the past. But yeah, I mean, like 1000 watts. Just as a, you know, an obvious point, this is not going to be um, coming to the market for PC gamers. We are not going to have a 1000 watt uh, RTX 50 based GPU. That is not happening. Trust me, it is not happening. In a previous video um, that I put out, uh, I can't remember exactly how long ago, maybe like a week, to, no, it's over a week, maybe about two weeks ago, I did mention, uh, I was talking more about the Blackwell specifications and performance targets, and I you know, mentioned there that I was hearing around 50 to 60% in raster performance for um, RTX 50. Again, this was maybe about two weeks ago, I think. Uh, that's from memory and you know it might be a little more or so but roughly about two weeks ago and i did hear at that point that uh, they might go over 500 watts like it might be around 520 550 watts at absolute maximum um, i do suspect a lot of it is still not decided because obviously when it comes to these figures they can basically um they can basically change it last minute with a bios update i'm um, obviously being a little you know Simple, a little simplistic in the explanation, but they can do that. So I, I wouldn't put a huge amount of, uh, you know, worry about, you know, a thousand watts anytime soon for gaming. But for the data center, this is going to be an absolutely monstrous level of performance. Um, Hopper H100 is uh, 700 watts, but that's for SXM. So again, um, whether this is like some type of MCM variant, which is allegedly what they're working on, it has like um, two compute dies, it's going to be absolutely ridiculous. I do think Blackwell is going to be a very good architecture. Whether or not it's going to be enough for you to upgrade if you've got like an RTX 4090, it's going to be, well, of course, down to you. But um, anyway, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Apologies for not being on camera for this video. I'm still somewhat getting over my uh, plague. I'm feeling a little better. But uh, yeah, I've had to pause the video several times over to blow my nose and it's not really, you know, the best. But hopefully in the next couple of days, I'll be back to normal. With that said, guys, take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.